You know, ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting to an age, I'm not a senior yet, but I've seen a lot in hockey. Now, when you get a bunch of Montreal Canadian fans together in a room, they're saying to yourself, who was the greatest Montreal Canadian of all time? Did be votes for Mercer Richard, even the pocket rocket, John Bellevaux, Jacques Plante, Guy Lafleur, Carey Price, for obvious reasons, George Hainsworth, George Vezina, uh, any number of players like on defense, Larry Robinson. Uh, but it all started really, the legend of the Montreal Canadiens uh, became almost godlike because of this guy. He died in an early age because of an on-ice accident. Some people say he died of a broken heart because he thought he would never play again. But for a lot of people, Howie Morenz is the spiritual uh, grandfather of all the Montreal Canadian fans and teams from the 19, the mid, what do you call, uh, the uh, post-World War I, pre-World War II era to modern day. Now, beginning in 1923, he first skated with the, the Montreal Canadiens in two very stints, the Chicago Blackhawks when he was traded, and the New York Rangers. Now, before joining the NHL, he excelled in the junior version of the OHA, where his team played for the Morville Cup, which at the time was emblematic of a junior supremacy in Canada. Now it's Canada and the States. In the NHL, he was one of the most dominant players in the league and set several league scoring records, won three cups and led in points twice. Now, a strong skater, he had numerous uh, nicknames. I've heard many over the years, but we'll keep to his two most famous, the Stratford Streak and the Mitchell Meteor, uh, referring to where he was born. Now, Hockey Hall of Fame, posthumously inducted in 1944. Now, considered one of the first stars of the NHL, and ironically, one of the first major sports stars in Canadian history because everyone knew his name in the States and Canada. He played 14 campaigns in the major leagues. Again, he won the Stanley Cup three times, all with the Habs. During his initial career, he placed in the top 10 scores 10 times. For seven straight seasons, he led the Canadians in both goals scored and points. He was named the winner of the Hart Trophy as the MVP of the league three times, and he led the league once in goals scored and twice in points scored. After the introduction of the All-Star teams in 31, he was named to the NHL All-Star team twice on the first squad and uh, on the second team once. Now, Morenz, according to published reports, died from complications of a broken leg. He had an injury suffered in a game. A lot of people say it was because of the stress that he was going under and people say a broken heart. After his death, the Canadians retired his jersey number, the first time the team had done so for any player. When the Hockey Hall of Fame opened in 45, he was one of the original nine inductees. Uh, in the 1950, Canadian Press named him the best ice hockey player of the first half of the 20th century. And in 2017, the NHL included him on their list of the 100 greatest players in league history. Now get this, ladies and gentlemen. There's not much, much tape or a kinescope on Howie Morenz. Word of mouth in the media, and I knew about Morenz at quite a young age. I started reading about him, I think when I was five years old, in an old Stan Fischler book, and I've been completely fascinated because he has a connection to the modern day Habs because he's related to some of the ancestors uh, uh, of Hab players, including uh, True Marriage, uh, Boom Boom Jeffrey. Now, born in Mitchell, Ontario, to William Frederick Morenz and Rosina Rose Pauli, Howie Morenz had three sisters, Freda, Irma, and Gertrude, and two brothers, Wilfred and Ezra. He learned his hockey by playing shitty on the Thames River. At the age of eight, he played his first organized game as a goalie, where he allowed 21 counters in one contest. After that game, a coach switched Morenz, uh, Morenz to Rover and arrested his history. Now, starting with the 1916-17 junior season as a goalie, uh, he then became a forward when it became apparent his speed was much more suitable for an offensive role, and he helped the Mitchell squad to win the Western Ontario junior title. After Moran's family moved to the nearby community of Stratford in May 1917, he did try enlisting in the Canadian military, but was refused when recruiters learned he was only 15. Now, at the age of 18, Morenz became an apprentice with the CNR factory in Stratford. When not playing hockey, he bet avidly on horse races and played the ukulele. 
typical young man in Ontario. In 1926, he married Mary McKay. Together, they had three children. Howie Jr. in 27, who died in 2015. Donald in 1933, who died in 1939. And Marlene in 1934. Now, Marlene, who passed away in 2018, later later married Bernie Boom Boom Jeffrey, who played Bold for the Habs and the Rangers from 50 to 68. Her son, Moran's grandson, Dan, played for the Habs in 1980. Dan's son, Blake, played for the University of Wisconsin and won the Hobie Baker Award as the best college player in the States in 2010. Now selected in the 2006 initial entry draft by the Predators, he made his debut with the Preds in 2011, becoming the first fourth generation NHL player, though this is not a fourth generation direct link since it goes through Howie Morenz's daughter marrying him Bernie. Blake was traded to Montreal in 2012, meaning that all four generations of the Morenz Jeffrey family have played within the Canadiens organization. Now, in 1920, Morenz joined the Stratford Midgets junior team, this was an under 20 squad, leading the OHA in assistant points during the 21 regular season and goals, assistant points, and playoffs. The Midgets won the league title and played the 1921 Memorial Cup against the Winnipeg Falcons. While Moran scored a hat-trick, three goals in the second game of the series, the Midgets lost the total goal series 11-9. His performance in the Memorial Cup tournament earned him an invitation to play for the Stratford Indians, a senior out league team for the 22 campaign. When he joined the Indians, he continued to play for the juniors as well. During the playoffs, he led both leagues in goals, assists, and points, and he also led the senior league in penalty minutes. Playing exclusively in the senior league in the 23 season, he led the team... Uh, led the season in assists, playoff goals, points, and penalty minutes. Now, during a CNR hockey tournament held in December 22 in Montreal, he scored nine goals in the game for Stratford. A friend of Leo Dandarin, the owner of the Habs, refereed the game and told Dandarin how good Marins was. Now, Dandarin went to Stratford in January 23 to watch Marins play and decided he wanted to sign him to the Habs. In April, he met with William Morenz, and because of the age of 20, Howie was still legally a minor. William told Dandelin that he wanted Howie to finish his apprenticeship at the CNR, which would take another two years. However, in July, Dandelin learned that Morenz and his father had been in contact with the Toronto St. Pats, a rival team in the NHL which would evolve into the Maple Leafs. Fearing that Morenz would sign in Toronto, Dan Duras and his friend Cecil Hart to Stratford with instructions to sign Morenz at any cost. On July 7, 23, Morenz signed a contract with the Habs for three years with a salary of $3,500 per year and a $1,000 signing bonus, a considerable amount for a first year pro. Now, right after signing the contract with the Habs, he began to reconsider joining them. Stratford residents, as well as his senior team, wanted him to stay, and Morenz yielded to the pressure. He wrote a letter in August to Dan Darin, explained that he could not leave Stratford, and included the check given to him as a signing bonus. After receiving the letter, Dan Darin phoned Morenz and told him to come to Montreal to talk in person. In Montreal, Morenz began explaining his reasons for not signing to Dan Darin, but it began crying and could not finish. In response, Dan Darin falsely threatened that if Morenz did not join the Habs, his pro career would be over. Hearing this, Morenz relented and agreed to report to the Canes training camp later in the year. Now, on December 23rd, December 3rd, 23, he arrived at the first Canadian training camp and quickly impressed his new squad. He made his initial debut on December 26th in Ottawa against the Senators, scoring one counter. Now, at the conclusion of the 24 season, Morenz first in the NHL, he had 13 goals and 3 assists in 24 games. Finishing first in the league for the first time in five years, the Canadians faced the Senators in the playoffs for the NHL title. In his first game of the two-game total goal series, Morenz scored the only goal and added another goal in the second game as the Canadians won the series five goals to two. As the champions of the NHL, the Canadians played two teams for Western Canada for the Stanley Cup. They defeated the Vancouver Maroons of the PCL. PCHL, PCHA, excuse me, in two games at best of three series, and then faced the Calgary Tigers of the Western Canada Hockey League. In the first game against Calgary, Moran scored a hat trick as the Habs won and won by a score of 6 1. He scored another goal in the second game as Montreal defeated 
the Tigers to win their second Stanley Cup title and Morenza's first with the team. Let's put this in perspective, ladies and gentlemen. The Montreal Canadiens of the modern era, all the success links to Morenz arriving. Now, but how good was Howie Morenz in that first year? Well, you couldn't stop him. He was going to get his goals, whether you liked it or not. And he showed the next season. The following year, he scored 28 goals and had 11 assists for 39 points. Plays second on the Habs in 40 NHL in scoring. He had uh, seven goals and eight points in six playoff games as Montreal lost in the finals to Victoria Cougars of the WCHL. Now, Morenz tied with line mate the great Oriol Joliet in leading the Habs in scoring in 26 with 26 points, finishing fifth in the league. In 27, he was third in the league in goals with 25 and points with 32 to again lead the Habs. The one goal he scored in four playoff games was a series winner in the quarters, eliminating the Montreal Maroons from postseason contention. Now, the 28th season, a lot of people said it was their best, his best ever in the NHL. On March 24th, in the final game of the year, he earned two assists, tying the dead NHL record for assists in the season with 18, and becoming the first player to reach 50 points in the season, finishing with 51. Now, at the time, ladies and gentlemen, rarely you would see two assists on a goal. It was like one goal, and then somebody would be called to assist. Now, as the league leader in goals with 33 assists and points, he was named the winner of the Hart Trophy as the association's MVP. Though his scoring totals went down to 29 with 17 goals and 27 points, he still led the Habs in scoring and tied for third overall in the league. Now, in 1930, Morenz finished seventh in the league in scoring with 50 points, including 40 goals uh, uh, counted for the first time in his career. This included a game against the Americans on March 18, when he scored five goals against New York in that contest. Now, in the playoffs, he added another five go three goals, including his second Stanley Cup winning goal as the Canadians bet the Bruins for the third Stanley Cup. In the 31 season, Moren scored 28 goals and matched his career high with 51 points, winning his second NHL scoring title and being awarded the Hart Trophy for the second time. He was also named a newly created NHL All-Star team, being selected as the first team center as a top player in that position. In the playoffs, the Canadians reached the cup final for the second year, playing the Blackhawks. Playing with injured shoulder being held back by the Blackhawks, he only scored one goal throughout 10 playoff games. The final playoff uh, goal uh, in the postseason that year as he won his third Stanley Cup with the Habs, many dynasty in the early 30s. The 32 season was another practice season for Morenz. With 49 points, he finished third in the league scoring and became the first player in NHL history to win the Hart for a third time, also being named their first All-Star team again. On March 17, 32, game against the New York Americans, he scored his 334 point with assists, passing the great side Denny as the NHL record holder for career points. Now, minor injuries had led to Morenza's point titles going down the following season as he finished second on the Habs in scoring behind Joliet. The first time in seven years he did not lead the Habs. He ended up 10th in league scoring with 35 points. Now in the postseason, he had three assists in two games. The 34 season also saw Moren's goal and point totals fall to 8 and 21. Even with his decline in scoring, he still managed to reach a significant milestone, once again passing Cy Denny to do so. Against the Red Wings on December 23rd, 33, he scored his 249th career goal to become the NHL leader all time for counters. On January 2nd, 34, Morenz unfortunately twisted his ankle in the game in New York, bruising the bone and tearing ligaments. It was the first serious injury of his career, and he was unable to play for a month. Now, Morenz uh, was eventually unable to play at his previous level, and the Canadians fans, in, in a very, very uh, public and negative incident, began booing him, which I completely, completely think got into his mind. Now, with his decline in production, reports of the Canadians wanting to trade Morenz began appearing in Montreal newspapers. When the Habs began their playoff series against the Blackhawks, the Canadians GM, Lido Dandara, who had once threatened him with uh, lies about the squad, confirmed that several teams wanted to acquire Morenz. After playing the first game with his usual speed and skill, Morenz broke his thumb in the second game, finishing with a goal to assist in the playoffs. Now, after the postseason, Morenz addressed the trade rumors, telling a reporter that he would only play for the Habs, saying that when I can't play for them, I'll never put on a skate again. 
though the Habs manager knew he was too passionate about hockey to quit. During the summer of 34, Morenz began concerned about his future with the team. Newspapers continue to write that Morenz would be involved in a trade involving several players and teams, but adding to Morenz's concern was a lack of response from either the Canadiens' owner, Leader Dardaran, or Joe Catterinch, informing him what was happening. The rumors ended on October 3rd, 34, when Morenz, in one of the worst trades ever in Montreal history, was sent along with goalie Lauren Shabbat and defenseman Marty Burke to the Chicago Blackhawks for forwards Leroy Goldsworthy and Liner Conacher and defenseman Roger Jenkins. Now, his first season with the Blackhawks, he played in all 48 games their team with 8 goals and 34 points and approved it over the previous seasons. Now, the Blackhawks did reach the playoffs, though Morenz didn't get a point in two contests. The following season was not as good as Morenz. He did not feel uh, comfortable in Chicago and was being benched, playing fewer minutes than he was used to. After 23 games with the Blackhawks, in which he had 15 points, he was traded for the second time in his career, sent to the Rangers for no-name forward Glenn Brideson. Playing 19 games for the Rangers, he had two goals and four assists for six points, giving him 21 points in the season. Now, over summer 36, the Canadians rehired Cecil Hart to be the coach of the team, and Hart agreed to the job on one condition, that the Canadians bring Morenz back to the squad. In one of the, the most important days in Montreal Canadiens history, on September 1st, 36, Morenz once again joined the Habs, his contract being purchased by the team from the Rangers. The Canadiens spent most of the 37th season as one of the best teams in the NHL. Morenz contributed regularly, occasionally showing the speed that made him notable at the start of his career. By mid-January, he had four goals and 20 points, far better totals than previous years. However, the Canadians uh, and all hockey fans didn't see this coming, And but this, I, I, I say this with a disclaimer, is one of the saddest things I've ever seen as a Habs fan, but take it as you will. They played the Blackhawks in Montreal on January 28, 37. In the first, Morenz went after the puck in Chicago Inn while being chased by Blackhawks defenseman Earl Siebert. Morenz lost his balance and fell to the ice, crashing into the boards and catching his life skate in a wooden siding. Siebert, unable to stop, landed on him with full force. The resulting impact snapped Morenz's left leg, creating a noise heard throughout the rink. Helped to the Canes bench by his teammates, Morenz was taken to Hospital St. Luc, where his found his leg was fractured in four places. Some people say six. Now, Hart was initially hopeful that Morenz could return after six weeks, but after learning of the severity of the injury, conceded that Morenz not be able to play, would not be able to play for the rest of the season. Now, while recovering in the hospital, Morenz received many get-well cards and visits from his teammates and players from other NHL teams. There were so many of them who brought drinks that a teammate remarked that the whiskey was on a dresser and the beer was under the bed. Though there were many visitors, Morenz often found himself alone in the hospital room, unable to move off his bed. To pass the time, he read newspapers to stay up to, up to date with the Habs as he finished the season. Since his injury, the team had dropped in the standings, causing Morenz to worry. He began to think he would never play hockey again and became depressed. Now, the Canadian team doctor, Dr. J. Hector Forger, visited Morenz in late February and determined that he had suffered a nervous breakdown. To help Morenz, Dr. Forger banned all visitors to his room except for family and Canadian's officials. Now, Mary, uh, Morenz's beautiful wife, and her oldest son, Howie Jr., visited on most days, and William Morenz, his father, traveled from Stratford during the first week of March and stayed through March 5th. On March 8th, Morenz began complaining of chest pains, which doctors attributed to a heart attack. Mary Morenz and Cecil Hart were called to the hospital around 11.30. Morenz, uh, at the time, tried to get out of bed to use the washroom, but they collapsed on the floor and died from a coronary embolism caused by blood clots from his damaged leg. Minutes before his wife and his coach arrived, the legend was dead at 34. Now, the Canadians were scheduled to play the Montreal Maroons the evening of March 9th, a game the NHL offered to cancel in honor of Morenz's death. However, Mary insisted the game be played, saying that Morenz would have wanted the game to continue. The players on the Habs and Maroons wore black armbands for the game, and prior to the start, two minutes of silence were observed in his honor. A summer event happened in New York, where the Rangers and the Americans had a moment of silence before the start of their game. Now, a funeral was held on March 11th at the Montreal Forum, the arena where the Canadians played. 
Fans were allowed to file past the casket laid at Center Rice, and more than 50,000 people paid their respects. A retaining guard of honor of four Canadians stood around the casket, which was covered in flowers, including a large wreath from Oriel Joliet that was shaped like the number seven, Morenza's number, and a note from Morenza's three children. The entire service was broadcast on the radio, and after its conclusion, he was buried in the Montreal, uh, Mont Royal Cemetery in Montreal. Now, Montreal uh, was in mourning for months after his passing. To honor him, the Habs retired his jersey number 7 on November 2, 1937, the first time the team honored a player in that fashion. This was prior to a benefit All-Star game, which was held in the forum to raise money for the Morens family. A team composed of players from the Habs and Maroons were defeated 6-5, by a team from players uh, from the other squads. Now, one of the most skilled players in the early NHL, he uh, led the Habs in both goals and points from 30, 26, and 32, although he tied with the great Joliet in 1926. At the time of his death, he had set an NHL record for most career points with 472. Now, again, Hockey Hall of Fame induction, 1945, one of the original nine, and uh, uh, Canadian Press, uh, named him the best hockey player of the first half of the 20th century. In 98, he was also ranked 15th on the Hockey News list of the 100 greatest hockey players. Now, uh, Morenz was also listed on the NHL Top 100 in 2017. Now, this is how it goes. True the exciting play, Morenz encouraged the expansion of the NHL, helping bringing pro hockey to the States. Watching Morenz play during the 24th Stanley Cup Final between Montreal and Calgary, Morenz's first season in the NHL, Charles Adams, the owner of a chain of grocery stores, went back to Boston wanting a hockey team based in the city. That summer, the NHL granted Adams a franchise for the following season, uh, which he called the Boston Bruins. So, a Montreal Canadian player was so impressive, he helped create the Boston Bruins. I kid you not. Now, boxing promoter Tex Rickard, who also worked with Jay, uh, Jack Dempsey, owned the Madison Square Garden, also saw Marin's play in the early his career and agreed to add ice to his building for a New York team known as the New York Americans. Now, as part of this agreement, Marin's and the Canadians played the first game against Americans on December 15, 1925. Now, Marenz's daughter Marlene married uh, Boom Boom, who also played for the Habs and Rangers, and was also uh, later inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. When the Canadians retired Jeffrey Owens' number on the night of his death on March 11, 2006, the team recognized the link between the two men. As Jeffrey Owens' banner was being raised to the rafters, Marenz's banner was lowered halfway to the ice. Once Jeffrey Owens' banner reached Marenz's banner, the two were raised together. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if the legends are true, from Stratford to Montreal, to Chicago, to uh, New York, back to Montreal, creating really the modern NHL, because uh, just like Babe Ruth, just like uh, Jim Thorpe, uh, uh, Morenz, you say, you, you don't say he plays like Morenz, you wish he could play like Howie Morenz. The modern era started with Howie Morenz because uh, a superstar he was and a superstar he's presented. He saved the Montreal franchise from itself. He's, he helped create the Bruins and the Americans and what I call the Americanization of the NHL. So just going to recap again. Stanley Cup 24, 30, and 31. 30 and 31, the mini dynasty for Montreal. Top scorer in 28 and 31. Hard winner 28, 31, 32. First team All-Star Center, 31-32. Second team uh, All-Star Center in 30-33. Now, uh, there's various uh, publications about Howie Morenz. The great Stan Fischler, Brian McFarlane, Dick Beddows have written on him. But to put this in perspective, ladies and gentlemen, okay, 5'9", 165. Not the biggest man in the world, but they, they, they say to be legendary there's there's uh, it's what since he's passing it's been 85 90 years I'm a 56 year old sports editor who draws all his inspiration from the Montreal Canadians he watched growing up as soon as I heard about Howie Morenz I said to myself I'm home so if you if you're a fan of the Montreal Canadians if you know the legend of Howie Morenz of Jean Beliveau, of Rocket Richard, of Jacques Plante, of Georges Vezina, 
And God bless him, Guy Lafleur is dying as we speak, ladies and gentlemen. I think I think back as a child, what would the world be like with the Montreal Canadiens? Uh, it'd be, be fucking boring, wouldn't it? Everybody wants to beat Montreal or wants to follow Montreal. Uh, women that have never had a man in their life, or will never have a man, will always have the Montreal Canadiens to keep them warm at night. Young kids who look at Carey Price and are motivated to go on the goaltending. Young female hockey players who learn the history of hockey and dedication to all the great Montreal Canadiens playoff series. Um, when Montreal made the Stanley Cup final last year, let me put it this way, game six against Vegas, it was like Howie Morenz, the goals of Howie Morenz, came out of hiding because he might have been hiding a little bit because, you know, how he, how he wasn't good with the public. He might have just showed up for five seconds to check out check in uh, all these Habs. And sure enough, he won an overtime game six, one of the biggest games that Montreal has ever played without winning the Stanley Cup. Uh, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. If the world didn't have Howie Morenz, uh, a group of script writers couldn't write enough to, 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 to create him. Did he really exist? Of course he did. We have all the stats. But hockey in 2022, sure, baseball's popular in football, but it's religion. The Montreal Canadiens are religion. You see that CH there? It's like your home. It's like it's everything you want to be. And it's, it's success. It's overcoming the odds. It's, uh, it's people that don't like you, and you still show them you can beat them. And a lot of people don't like the Montreal Canadiens because... He can't deal with success. People go through their whole life trying not to reach for their dreams or success. I've reached for my dreams all my life because people like Howie Morenz, he didn't have to leave Stratford. He could stay there and he could cash checks for years. But he wanted to take it to the next level. And what did that lead to, ladies and gentlemen? The Montreal Canadiens, the modern Montreal Canadiens as we know now, Le Glorieux, the glorious ones, it all comes down to Howie Morenz. Why in the hell would uh, Vigo Murray Mortensen wear a Montreal Canadiens jersey during the filming of The Lord of the Rings? You figure that out. We all need heroes, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, I'm going on too long. If you like what you're doing here with our Montreal Canadian podcast, let us know with a like, comment, or subscribe. And don't forget, if you're not a Montreal Canadian fan, you you can't ignore you can't ignore us. I am sure there was a whole bunch of English, Anglo, anti-French Canadians across Canada were freaking out. Now, Montreal made it a Stanley Cup final, but like my friend of Woodstock, the Brunswick said, they're the Habs. You give them a chance to win, they're going to win. It's the way it goes. What do you think 86 and 93 was? You know, you know, God is a Canadian fan, a Montreal Canadian fan. It has to be. Anyway, thanks for listening, and don't forget, requests are always appreciated and always considered. Bye.